Mark always says that you can leave True North Church and you can forget my name, you can forget what I even preached on, but what we don't want you to do is to ever forget who Jesus is here at this place. I remember one of the first services, probably the second week we were here, I remember um, God just started bringing all different cultures in, and it wasn't just native and white people. It was a melting pot of everybody. I think I shared the gospel for two to three months before anyone accepted Christ. Saved people came, and then all of a sudden, a, a woman named Cindy accepted Christ. Cindy was a former heroin addict. Well, she accepted Christ. Her husband accepted, her boyfriend, who she married the next week, accepted Christ. And all of a sudden, we started seeing people saved. We've grown because I think we've encouraged our people to always invite their friends to Christ. And so we wanted to design a ministry where people could bring their friends to church and connect with saved people and lost people in the same place, the atmosphere of love and acceptance and joy and all those things. And in the process, we do a couple things strategic. One is there are several things every year we're gonna encourage them to raise their evangelism temperature. So for Easter, we'll do, we'll do the Easter dare. And the Easter dare for us is we dare you to write five friends down on a five friend prayer card to pray for five friends. So we always want to raise the evangelism temperature. And secondly, we want every ministry to be pointed outside. Most churches design ministries for saved people. We want to remember the reason we did ministry was not to just scratch the ears of saved people. If you don't have people thinking about lost people, you have people fighting over the color of the carpet. Um, we were created the fight. Let's fight for the right thing and that's souls. What I see, I see a sanctuary that seats 800 people, and uh, I see three or four services in there, kids area that is second to none in, in the state. I see several thousand people worshiping, which means a million dollars a year to mission someday. I see uh, being able to build a team of young yeah. people where we can be relevant with where life is going in the village life, yeah. not in the urban city, not somewhere in LA or Seattle or Portland where yeah. I'm from, but in the village life. I see a Bible college institute up here with 50, 60 students minimum. We've already got two village churches. We see having 30 by the end of 2030. And so mission outposts with people that go in, uh, kids ministry, youth ministry, missions trips going in. Um, the sky's the limit. There's so much that God's gonna allow us to do here.